Hello, it's Vanessa Tilson here. Um, in this video, I would like to show you how to use um, the draws function in Polyboard. Uh, this is in answer to uh, several questions I received on the forum that were asking how to build the draws and how to do the, the parameters of the draws and how to get uh, a set of draws with different size draw fronts. In fact, in Polyboard it is all pretty easy. So, just to show you how this works, let's start a, a new cabinet and click OK. And this is just a default cabinet with default materials that we've set up. No, no assembly details or nothing on it. Say, for instance, on this cabinet, I want to set in a set of drawers. If I just put my click right inside the volume and I click in the context menu add drawers I can just add here a number of drawers so you want six drawers and if I click on the assembly button I can tell Polyboard whether I want what elements I want to manufacture in the drawers for instance a, um, a counter front sides draw back and a draw bottom if I didn't want these elements if I was buying my drawers ready-made I would not enter these elements at all of course and that would mean that I would here we have the if we are manufacturing the drawers ourselves we have the possibility of giving the distance between the sides of the drawers and the sides of the cabinet uh, between the top of the cabinet and the drawers bottom of the cabinet and the drawers or I would have the possibility of uh, taking uh, fixed height and a fixed length if I was actually buying the drawers pre-manufactured Let's say that we're manufacturing the drawers. I just click OK and I click OK. Uh, Polyboard will just automatically insert the drawers. Now these drawers are all exactly the same size, of course. What happens if I want to put some drawers that are different sizes? Well, the easiest way to do that would be to separate the volume, divide the volume up beforehand into, the into different areas where we want to put different types of drawers. For instance, if we go back, for instance, if I wanted two big drawers at the bottom of this bit of this column and four smaller drawers at the top, I would divide the column into two parts. To divide a column into two parts, we have to put into put into a, into it a panel. So if I say add a shelf, which is a horizontal panel, a horizontal division, and I put the shelf in the middle, now we have two volumes and I can put a set of drawers in here which is different to the set of drawers in here. But supposing I didn't want that panel well, if I didn't want the, the separating shelf here to show up, I would give it a material which is a virtual material called a nil material. To do that, I select it, I go over to materials, and in the materials list up here, I have what we, at the top of the materials list, we have what is called a nil panel. A nil panel is a virtual panel that enables us to divide up any volume into sub volumes, but without actually putting in a panel. I could just put in, if I put in nil panel, this is now becomes a virtual panel, and if I go into the 3D, I see nothing. But in the editing window, we can see that the volume is now divided into two. So if I click for putting in drawers in the bottom volume, I can add drawers here. Say I want to add drawers with assembly details, and I want to add two drawers, I will now have two big drawers here at the bottom. I can go into the top of volume and do the same add drawers let's add some assembly details too and this time though I want to put in four drawers and now we have four drawers equal distance at the top I've divided into two volumes I put different types of drawers now the four drawers at the top are still equal same as the two drawers at the bottom are equal I could have of course um, this is this is the the default way the drawers the drawers are entered. They divide it, the the volume is divided up into an equal number of parts. Put an equal number of drawers. Um, to change the, uh, the 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 height of each drawer, we could always do this. We could also use multi draw param parameters. If I go into multi draw parameters over here on the right hand side of my screen, I come up with a little editing screen with the four drawers, these are called multi drawers, there's four of them, and I can actually edit the, the position of the uh, divisions between each drawer. For doing this, I go into individualized 
division parameters and I can edit the position of the of the the um, the joint between the first panel panel one here and the second panel here if I click over here I can add for instance that I wanted a specific distance if I take positioning as a parameter I can say that the particular top draw for instance if I want its position at only 100 millimeters from the top the this this uh, multiple draw editor will actually put the first draw now at 100 millimeters from the top the joint between the two doors at 100 millimeters from the top if I go down to the second panel and I say that I want it a certain distance from the top too I can tell you for instance if I want this is 100 and I want this to be 200 I can just put in 300 here from the top that's this distance to here to here putting in 300 now this is 100 and this is 200 if I want the bottom draw here that is the distance that, that I want to edit the position of the joint line between the third draw and the fourth draw third and the fourth draw I go into this particular parameter and I say that I want to give it a specific distance a distance from the bottom this time so I will do opposite distance opposite being the bottom here and I say for instance at the bottom here I want 120 millimeters and then when I click out of here I now have 120 millimeters here I don't know what distance I've got in here but I've got 200 and 100 here click OK and now we have two big drawers and four completely different drawers at the top although there's still one block of drawers at the top so that's how you can edit the actual fronts uh, of the drawers in two ways easiest being to put in a nil panel and then just divide the divide the volume up into an equal number of drawers and the second way actually give individual dimensions to each drawer another question I had this week was how to uh, someone asked me how to modify uh, drawers the structure of the drawers and, ha and the, as the assembly details of the drawer um, this is pretty simple in fact it, modifying the structure of a drawer in polyboard is exactly the same as modifying the a box so let's, let's put in a put in a drawer um, let's put in a drawer and I'll just show you how quickly how to modify the structure of a drawer let's take um let's take this uh, bit of furniture and let's give it a, a sort of height of 250 and just put one drawer in it let's put one drawer if I say add a drawer this bit of furniture and let's add all the different parts to the drawer and see how they come in okay 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 a drawers I've got all the different parts of the drawer here uh, let's get rid of um, let's get rid of everything except for the drawer so let's say that in fact we don't want a top we don't want a bottom we don't want a side nothing but the drawer okay and if we look in 3d we can see now we've actually got a drawer I'm going to just change the materials of each different part of the drawer so that we can see very more clearly we can see more clearly how the drawer is actually being uh, being made let's just go into the libraries choose a sub method and the material style and I've made a traditional drawer st material style which just applies different textures to the sides uh, materials so that we can actually see the different assembly assembly details okay so we have a drawer here which is uh, with a uh, with a uh, front and, and counter front, and by by default um, the sides butt up against the counter front. Um, somebody has asked me how to make ch t change this and make a draw with in a traditional method with the sides uh, actually overlapping the counter front so that they can be um, assembled into the counter front with a tongue and tongue and groove joint. The back being moved forward and the bottom uh, instead of being just um, stuck on to the bottom like that in a rebate um, we don't actually see the bottom very well let's change the bottoms I can't see the bottom very well let's change the bottoms material so that we can actually um, bottoms 
Um, is it nil material? What's that? Bottom, no. Let's change the bottom material. Uh, oh no, sorry, this is not. This is the bottom of the bit of furniture I had there. Let's change the bottom of the drawer bottom. Drawer bottom. And let's put that. Um, do I have a five millimeter here? And let's get rid of the bottom here. Bottom, no. Cabinet. Right, there we have a, a different material for the bottom so that we can see more more clearly um, what we're doing with it. Okay, let, let's. I want the bottom now. Instead of being just um, just filling the bottom here, we want it assembled. We want it, you know, grooved into the sides, and we want the back move forward and the bottom coming underneath, like a traditional style um, assembled drawer. Uh, to do this is exactly the same as if you were doing it with a bit of furniture. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do, I could do it on each individual part, but Let's put it so that we can see actually what's happening in 3D as we go. Let's put, uh, let's use the library sub methods so that we can modify the sub method and we don't have to go and select each individual part. This is very easy. Let's say, for instance, that um, let's just give a, let's just have a, a selection of the, um, the different parts we want to use. Let's say we want to have this one, the jaw front, the counter front, the back. And the draw bottom, and let's say we only want that in 3D, so that we can see inside the drawer how it's assembled. And we can see that the, for instance, the the the, the bottom now is just butted up against the sides, which is not not fantastic, right? Okay, now let's try and um, modify this assembly so this drawer looks more like a traditional drawer assembly using the library sub methods. I'm going to library sub methods and we do have a sub methods called draw. Okay, so let's um, let's just take uh, the sub methods draw. Okay, so here we are in the um, uh, draws sub method. Um, let's go into the assembly of the draw. So click on the assembly button, see how it's assembled. And we have when we go into there, we, we have the dialog box which pops up, which is the draw assembly, which is very similar to the sub methods, the, the dialog box of sub methods that you will find for uh, the actual bit of furniture, the actual uh, cabinets. So let's just uh, create some parameters in this sub methods so that we can change the draw and have exactly what we want. Uh, first of all, let's go into here and let, let's say that we want, for instance, as we can see here, that the sub method says actually. That the sides are underneath. That is that the front, the counter front, is overlapping the sides. We don't want that. We want the counter front here, and we want to move it down in priority to the sides. So click on the arrow moving down, and now the counter front relative to the sides is in fact non is not priority to the sides. It's not overlapping. The sides are overlapping the counter frontage. Uh, let's say the same thing we want for the back. Let's look at the back here. Back. What I want for here is I want the back not to be overlapping the, the bottom. So if I click the draw back and I take away its priority, it now moves it up and it's now the bottom overlapping the back. Um, I think that's about that's about right. Uh, hang on. I'm not sure whether well, the um, the bottom. That's right. That seems to be okay. Yeah, and the, the um, let's that, that's the priorities is fitted. Now let's give some rules to this. How the how, how the pieces actually do they how they do overlap and interact. Let's add a rule to it. Say for instance, we don't want. Um, we what what you want is we want the the back of the drawer. To be um, inset from the sides by 15 mil. We don't want it completely flush to the back of the side, but we want you know the sides overlapping. So we take a draw side, which is the overlapping panel, according to the back here, and we take it cons uh, relative to the back of the drawer, and let's give it an overlap of 15, 15 millimeters, and let's give it a instead of having a 
as having it butted against the sides. Let's put a groove in, and let's say the groove is a mil. Okay, let's see, just see what that gives now. If I say okay, and here we have it. We have now the sides are overlapping the front, the counter front. The back is inset along the side, 15 mil here to here, and we have a groove joint here. So let's go into, this is the full drawer, and this is the model that we can see inside the drawer. Right, let's continue moving, let's continue Let's continue developing this method. Uh, go into sub-methods and draw again. Let's put this box up here, and go into the assembly box. And let's get here so we can see what we're doing. <coughs> Now, let's add some more rules, because what I would like, I would like, for instance, um, the back, the bottom here, not to be flush and inserted as it is. It's actually inserted into the, um, into the, into the framing of the drawer. I want it actually as a groove, grooved, and I want it set up from the bottom by, say, 10 mil. So let's add another rule. And this time we're going to be working. Um, let's say we're going to be working on the bottom, and the bottom, which is um, the drawer bottom, which is underpassing, for instance, a drawer side. The the the, the drawer bottom underpassing the drawer side. No, sorry. I'm talking about the drawer side. Not the draw bottom, the draw side here, underpassing the draw bottom, and that will. And what we want is the side to overlap by 10 mil, and we want the the bottom to be assembled into the side with a groove, and the groove depth will put it 8 mil. Okay, so now the this this uh, relative to the sides, the bottom will now be grooved into it. We also want the bottom to go out underneath the back to the very air, to the same distance as the side. So let's take the um, here we have the overpassing panel being the bottom, draw bottom, and the underpassing the underpassing panel being the draw back, and we want to overlap it by 15, and this will just be a recess. And let's say that's okay. Well, let's see what that's going to give us. Now we can see that the the draw is grooved into the side. The, the bottom of the draw is grooved into the sides, passes underneath the back, goes 15 millimeters beyond here, so it's flush with the side. The we will still have a problem here with the front. Now what's happened here is that the front. <laughs> Is um, has been moved up because the front is flush to the is remains flush to the bottom. So let's change that and make the front uh, and the bottom grooved into the front. Make the bottom grooved into the front. Let's put it over here. Go back into our library sub methods and draw sub methods and assembly details and let's add a. Let's say that the overpassing panel being the draw counterfront, counter frontage, uh, and the draw bottom, there's an overlap of the draw front to, of 10 mil, and it's assembled with a groove, and the groove is also 8 millimeters. Um, let's also change the assembly detail for the front of the drawer here where the the counter front meets assembles into the into the side i'm going to give you a make let's make a mortise and tenon joint along the or you know um, uh, a tongue and groove joint between the front and the side in that way i'm going to say the overpassing panel being the side the underpassing panel being the counter front and we're going to put in here a mortise and tenon 
uh, there'll be no overlap. The depth of the mortise and tenon eight, and let's create a thickness of also eight millimeters. And let's say that it's on the inside of the drawer, and that'll see what that's going to give. I'll say OK, OK, and let's apply that method to our drawer. And here we have it. We have now a mortise, the well tongue and groove joint between the side and the front. We have the bottom, which we can now slide in from behind into the grooves, and it's, as it's the, the bottom is grooved into the sides and the frontage, and just rests underneath the back in a traditional method. Um, the full the full drawer will be seen like this. So we can see how see now the actual assembly of the drawer, which is pretty simple to do. And that is now our drawer. What is interesting now is once we've, we've, we've defined this traditional drawer assembly method, um, what we can do is we can now say, let's go into the drawer assembly method now. This drawer assembly method is now in our drawer sub method as default at cabinet three, which is the name of our project. But what we can do is we can actually create uh, a new method if we click here duplicate and we'll give a name here traditional draw traditional draw now all the asset draw de assembly details are stored here in traditional draw so if I click OK now and I'll of course apply this to the, the actual method that is the actual method we're using what is interesting now is this, that these assembly details are stocked in a stub method. What does this mean? This means that if I start any bit of new furniture, whatever bit of furniture I have, I can apply this assembly details to that bit of furniture and the, the drawer will look like this one. I'll show you how this works. Let's close all our drawing details here. Close this new drawer. I don't want to save this. Let's start a completely new project. Here we have a new project. Let's throw in the drawers, add drawers, and let's just throw them in as they come. Give everything here. Okay. Oh no, sorry, that doesn't seem to. I've got, I only put one in. Let's get. Let's put a few in. It'll look better if we put a few in. Add drawers. I give them all my different parts, and let's put in. I don't know, six, seven, eight, eight drawers. Okay, we've got there eight drawers here. Okay, eight drawers. If I open them, here they are, eight drawers. Let's going to apply. I'm just going to apply a sub method like I did before of material styles, and like that, we'll see the different components of the drawers. Okay, if I just, if we just have a look at one of the drawers now. I just look at one of the drawers and we just select one drawer and let's go over 3D selection and here we have just one drawer at the top here. We can see that it comes in with a default style but let's just apply now sub method drawers and our traditional drawer. I click OK and apply this to our cabinet. Polyboard will take all the parameters that we've used when we designed the sub method, and now the drawers are all assembled with tongue and grooves and in the right manner according to our new our, our new method. So it, this becomes a very powerful tool for deciding how you want to build your, your cabinets. Uh, this is the same same um, use of sub methods as you can use for the whole cabinet, but just applied to the drawers. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope that's been interesting for you, and let's, uh, I'll say, see you again soon in another video. Goodbye.